So that. This is a brooch, are you? <laughs> Be nice, isn't it? No. I don't know, you film. I've I, I never had good luck with filming. No. It's a good feeling. What is this? Huh? You see how there? No. What's that? You got one, son? <laughs> I don't know if you pick it up. Oh my god. I don't know if you pick it up, 93. Huh? I kept it. No, I don't know. <laughs> Live on video. That's it. From a rally. Let's check with another one eh? A little bit of spit on her now, just to get him up. Oh, he's a maclet. No way. Oh, he's like new. So here comes the goods. Hey, out of the way, see what? Hey, Marklet. I don't know what Emperor is. What do you think, no man? 100%. Fair play to him. Hey. No more. Don't know. And there's the other oh, end. Yeah. Oh, stunning. Stunning. Let's a look. Oh, my God. For the last few years, museums across Wales have benefited from the Saving Treasures Telling Stories project. The project works with metal detectorists to record important items and buy the discovered treasure to local museums. The latest museum to benefit from the project is Cafarsa Museum, who will be the proud owners of five Roman denarii. The hoard of coins found in Vayner will be the museum's first piece of treasure. Well, it's really exciting because it's something that's never happened before. Um, obviously, we're quite a small museum, um, so we'd never be able to you know, have the funding to do this ourselves. So it's really special for us, especially because they were found in a local area um, by you know, local metal detectorists. So it, it, you know, we, we'll definitely put them on display because you know, it's such an interesting find. The coins will go on display at the museum to the public. Christopher Parry, communications and outreach officer for the museum, believes that the hoard will help educate the local community and offer an insight into a forgotten era in Wales's history. With towns like Merthyr Tydfil and a lot of valley towns that are really preoccupied with industrial heritage and often kind of, you know, Roman history and prehistory and a lot of different historical periods get overlooked and sidelined just to focus on industry. But obviously this, the, there was a community in Merthyr stretching back to when the Romans were coming into Britain and coming into Wales and there's Pendarrow Fort locally and there's a Roman road running through the borough going up to Brecon and so there's an incredible amount of kind of Roman heritage and other heritage that is not well interpreted, nowhere near as well interpreted and as well known as the industrial period. So things like the coins just give us like I say, it gives a physical presence to a history that is literally all but for kind of forgotten and sidelined in, in places like Merthyr. Darren Jessett, member of Merthyr Metal Detecting Club, says that metal detecting is important to understanding local history and heritage. It opens up the history for the whole area, you know. You know, like how long someone was living there, where they were working in the areas and living and all the rest of it. Yeah, there's a lot of 
There's a lot of information that can be found from items like these, you know. You know, like when this came out, I couldn't believe my eyes, like holding that in my hand, you know. And obviously, these things, and it's just unbelievable. You can't get like another feeling like it really, like, you know. Discovering the coins was a moment of pride for the group, some of who already have items on display at the museum. Well, we went up for the day. My machine broke, so I was using my dad's machine as well. He found the first one, which I thought I damaged by digging it out. <laughs> um, I had the second one, like 10 minutes later. Carl was coming over the fence. He said, oh, what do I add? They showed him the two denariuses. Within seconds of putting his machine down, and his machine went off, he had one. Yeah, happy days. <laughs> I've been detecting myself three years, and it's oh, achievement nice. for me, isn't it? Because um, well, I've only ever had like a 50 metre yeah. swimming badge growing up, and I was it. Never had no trophies, nothing like so. Uh, yeah, never, had, yeah, never had my name anywhere. Yeah. I've learned more history now than through the wind yeah. method, than I ever did in school. By working together, all those involved can help to acquire archaeological finds made by members of the public to be enjoyed by the wider community. It helps museums and it helps, it helps find, uh, detectorists and finders of treasures as well because it, it basically bridges a gap between the relationship because often people who find objects and, f and find these things out there wouldn't necessarily come straight into the museum. They might look to sell it online or do something else with it. They have that bridging gap between that person and the museum, so they're really important as a go-between, but also helping to interpret the objects being found effectively and documenting them, because the context of the objects is often lost in certain situations, but they really push for all that information to be kind of collected and passed on to the museum then, or whenever organisation it goes to afterwards. So yeah, it's incredibly important. A good work in practice is also important to the club. Apart from exactly what I come up with going is other, you know, it takes you a long way because it shows trust for one. And word of mouth goes a long way, especially between farmers, because one farm to the next farm. Like I say, you know, it's it is it is a bridge point to turn around, get on with the farmers, show exactly, keep up their rules and regulations. Shut gates, leave gates are open, leave them open, if you shut, leave them shut. And vice versa, basically you're walking onto their ground, respect their ground as much as anything else. It's their livelihood, isn't it? Yeah. It's, we've got only got, if, only got to respect them, because without them, none, yeah, none of us will be finding anything. The Saving Treasures Telling Stories project is funded by the National Lottery's Heritage Fund and hopes to support many more museums and communities until it ends at the end of 2019.